Did you know that Luke actually doesn't have a kid? It was all set up just to give him more reasons to take time off work, and my god is it working! I mean, who among us has actually seen this child? I haven't. Pete hasn't. Anybody who says otherwise must be lying. Of course, there are pictures, but those are clearly stock photos. This, my friends, is a grand old conspiracy. Now allow me to climb down from my soapbox and remove my tinfoil hat for a moment to instead talk about well, more conspiracy theories. With pro wrestling being a business built heavily on keeping information from its fans, it's no wonder that there have been a great many conspiracy theories drummed up by people looking for answers to some of wrestling's biggest questions. Of course, a good number of these theories have been debunked, but because wrestling and Twitter go together like hot sauce and baby formula, some of them still persist. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 craziest wrestling conspiracy theories. But before we get on with our list, make sure of course that you subscribe and enable notifications to always on so that you never miss a fun wrestling list video just like this one. And if you don't, I will just assume that you are conspiring against us. Can't have that. Number 10. The Montreal Screwjob was a work. One of the most famed wrestling conspiracy theories is, of course, the Montreal Screwjob being a work. The plot of Vince McMahon to screw Bret Hart and prevent him from taking the WWF title to WCW has been talked about ad nauseum, and despite various facts to the contrary, select fans and even wrestlers themselves still think Montreal was one big work. The reason for this belief is that many of those involved benefited from the whole ordeal. Shawn Michaels was crowned WWF champion and was the unquestionable top heel in the company. Company, Vince McMahon became the evil boss that allowed Stone Cold Steve Austin to become the biggest babyface in company history, and despite how things transpired for him long term, Bret Hart did secure a lucrative deal from WCW and went out of WWF as a sympathetic babyface, who could have been a huge success in new promotion WCW if booked correctly. Of course they didn't, but they could have. Also, why would WWF allow the letters of their biggest competitor to be shown by Hart spelling it out in front of the hard camera? These factors make the theory at least plausible, but everything else we know about it has left this theory almost entirely debunked. Number 9. William Regal Shoots on Goldberg this one makes for a fascinating story when you think about it. It is believed by some that the widely heralded and respected veteran William Regal, then known as Lord Stephen Regal, tried to shoot on the green and heavily pushed rising star Goldberg. The two stars met on the February 9th, 1998 edition of WCW Nitro, during the early days of Goldberg's now iconic undefeated streak. However, this bout lasted a lot longer than the typical Goldberg squash matches of the era and looked incredibly clunky by comparison. Some fans have speculated that Regal attempted to shoot on Goldberg during the match in an attempt to make him look bad, as there was a growing discontent in WCW that Goldberg's push may have been going to his head. To add to the rumors, Regal was fired shortly after this match. Turns out Chris Jericho might not be the only conspiracy victim in WCW. Of course, Regal firmly dismissed this claim in his autobiography, as well as in an interview back in 1999, where he explained that Goldberg was merely asked to work a longer match than usual, which he wasn't accustomed to. Regal used moves that Goldberg just wasn't used to, which is why everything came off so awkward. Regal's departure from the company was unrelated, and I now realize this is quickly just becoming a list of me debunking wrestling conspiracy theories. Number 8. Lex Luger cost himself the WWF Championship. Lex Luger seemed destined for big things in WWF. I mean, he was basically a Vince McMahon wet dream in human form after all. Upon the departure of Hulk Hogan from the promotion in 1993, Vince McMahon chose Luger to be the embodiment of America in a feud against Yokozuna over the WWF Championship. Despite riding across the country in the Lex Express that summer, Luger was unable to claim the top prize in the company by beating Yokozuna by countout at SummerSlam. He sure celebrated as if he'd won the title, but he didn't. Why are you celebrating, Lex? You didn't win the thing. It always seemed like the story would end with Lex holding the title over his head at WrestleMania 10 in 1994 as the chosen one, but that wasn't meant to be either, as Bret Hart was the one who beat Yokozuna for the gold in Madison Square Garden. For years, rumors swirled saying that Luger was scheduled to win the title until he ran his mouth about the victory at a bar the night before WrestleMania, with the theory going that this led to McMahon changing his mind and going with Bret instead. Not impossible to believe, seeing that the finish of the 1997 Royal Rumble ended up changing because Vince Russo opened his big dumb mouth about who was going to win, bro. But the total package has since debunked those rumors, saying that he was at a friend's house that night and was never scheduled to win the title. 
Really, the Lex Express had long since run out of gas by WrestleMania, and Brett was just naturally chosen as the correct choice. Number 7. Randy Savage Punched Hulk Hogan Before WrestleMania 9 Hulk Hogan had his first retirement match against Sid Justice at WrestleMania 8 in 1992, and it would be a full year before he would return to the square circle. He returned to back up his best friend Brutus Beefcake against Money Inc. at WrestleMania 9, but he had a noticeable change in his appearance. Hogan showed up to the event with a nasty black eye. Now there are a few tales as to how the Hulkster got the shiner. Kayfabe would tell you that it was Ted DiBiase who paid off some thugs to jump Hogan before the show, while the supposed true story was that Hulk was involved in a jet ski accident. However, the conspiracy theory is definitely the most interesting of the bunch, with the rumor going that macho man Randy Savage popped his former friend in the eye after he found out that Miss Elizabeth left him and Hulk got pulled into helping thanks to his wife Linda. Some rumors even go as so far as to insinuate that Hogan and Elizabeth may have had an entanglement, as Jada Pinkett Smith would call it, and Savage cleaned Hogan's clock when he found out. Of course, none of that has ever been proven, and the black eye could have just been the result of a rogue skidoo. Number 6. ECW was always owned by WWE ECW was the little extreme train that could in the 90s, reaching heights very impressive for their stature as the third biggest promotion in the United States at the time. But what if the company wasn't the third biggest promotion? What if it was really run as part of a larger promotion in secret? Under the leadership of Booker Paul Heyman, the stars of the fledgling company put on the performances of a lifetime to put ECW on the map and helped to revolutionize the business with the company thriving off of an us versus them mentality in the locker room and in front of the camera. Many of the ECW stars would eventually jump ship to WCW and WWE, with Heyman always ripping into Eric Bischoff and WCW with a little bit more vigor than he would with Vince McMahon and WWF. This of course comes from Heyman's poor treatment and exit from WCW years earlier, but this and more information about the relationship between WWF and ECW that has been divulged over the years has led many fans to believe that the Extreme Promotion was a subsidiary of WWF. ECW was technically on the WWF's payroll at the time, leading some in the know and many fans who knew very little to think ECW was being operated in some way by the big dub. Heyman has since explained that he was paid a check each week by a licensing company for the use of Too Cold Scorpio's music, and when Scorpio went to WWE, he asked WWE to reimburse him for the check that he was missing out on as a result, hence ECW being on the payroll, but not in the way fans had thought. Of course, Heyman could be lying, but when has he ever done that? Number 5. Brock Lesnar Wasn't Supposed to End the Streak At WrestleMania 30, one of the most shocking moments in WWE history took place as Brock Lesnar defeated The Undertaker, ending his 21-0 undefeated streak at the Showcase of the Immortals. The match, famously, was a bit crap as a result of The Undertaker bonking his head early in the bout and suffering a concussion, but the conspiracy theory here is that the dead man was supposed to kick out of the F5 that did him in, but was too concussed to do so. During a live show with Inside the Ropes, Paul Heyman himself further fanned the flames of this theory by giving a whole scenario of how this could be possible. Fans have always been split on the ending of the streak, with many saying Lesnar wasn't the guy to do it, but really it is more of a case of fans wanting to believe anything that backs up that argument, as Undertaker and Vince McMahon have both publicly debunked this one repeatedly. They both thought Brock was the only one who could realistically end the mythical streak and put him in a position to become the new unstoppable force for their next top star Roman Reigns to overcome. There's also the fact that WWE had the whole 21 in 1 graphic prepared for right after the match, so either someone backstage knew this was coming, or maybe they're the ones behind this conspiracy. My god, we've cracked the code, guys. Number 4. The Rock was trying to take over WWE with Nick Khan. Nick Khan's rise to power in WWE took many fans off guard, especially when it appeared he had leapfrogged both Stephanie McMahon and Triple H on the WWE hierarchy. He'd seemed destined to become the new head of the company when Vince McMahon inevitably stepped away from WWE, but seeing as that has now happened, and both Stephanie McMahon and Triple H have returned to positions of prominence, things are a little bit more as people always expected them to be. That didn't stop one insane conspiracy theory from making the rounds late last year that Nick Khan's ascent was actually part of a plot set by Dwayne The Rock Johnson to end up on top of the company. The Rock posted to Instagram in December 2021 where he revealed that he, Nick Khan, and Nick Khan's sister Nanachka were childhood friends having grown up in Hawaii together and reflected on how life comes full circle with Nick running WWE and Nanachka show running Young Rock. This one is truly a galaxy brain theory, but considering The Rock has already purchased the XFL and these pieces are in place, who's to say we couldn't one day see The Rock sitting in the biggest office of Titan Tower? 
Number three, the Ultimate Warrior was replaced. This might be the most outrageous conspiracy theory of them all. The Ultimate Warrior was one of the biggest stars of the WWF during the late 80s and was handed the WWF torch by Hulk Hogan, beating him for the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 6 in 1990. He didn't quite pan out as the top guy of the promotion because you can't follow up your top star with one too similar to him and after losing the gold the following year, a myriad of creative differences led to Warrior being fired following SummerSlam 1991 when he held up Vince McMahon for a payday. Unsurprisingly, because you try to get between Vince and a big muscly man, Ultimate Warrior was rehired in 1992, but he looked quite different. He had shorter hair and was a lot leaner. This led to fans coming to the logical conclusion that Jim Helwig, the man behind the original Ultimate Warrior character, had passed away and a new performer was under the paint as the second Ultimate Warrior. Some even speculated that Kerry Von Erich, aka the Texas Tornado, was under the guise because that made more sense than Warrior cutting his hair and slimming down post-steroid trial. Yeah, logic. Number two, Vince McMahon sent Vince Russo to WCW. In late 1999, WWF was steamrolling WCW with Vince McMahon as the head of creative and Vince Russo as head writer. Vince Russo wrote a lot of insane shit in WWF, whether it be the Brawl for All or the Pretty Mean Sisters or whatnot. He was a contributor during a very successful time in the company until he left the company basically overnight to take a job with WCW, leaving McMahon without his top writer while he was on an international tour. However, this wild theory goes that Vince McMahon actually sent Vince Russo to WCW to completely destroy the company from within to give WWF the final crushing blow in their rivalry. I mean, if he did that, it worked. Whether an intentional play on McMahon's part or not, Russo's contributions to WCW sunk the company into a pit it could never climb out of with the most consistently terrible booking any promotion has ever experienced on a national level. Russo made the gap between the two promotions even wider, but Vinnie Roo was one of the few who never came back to the WWF in a significant role following the close of WCW in 2001. If he was a hired gun, it stands to think that he would have a job waiting for him when his mission to kill the competition was over. And number one, Macho Man and Stephanie McMahon. This has become such a thing, and as Lanny Poffo expertly put it once upon a time, only two people know for sure, one's dead, the other's not talking. Macho Man Randy Savage was a two-time WWF champion and one of the most popular figures in the company's history. However, at the end of 1994 on an episode of Monday Night Raw, Vince McMahon announced that Savage had left the company. Mach never returned to the promotion following the close of WCW and was barely acknowledged on WWE television at all until he passed away in 2011, with Savage's WWE Hall of Fame induction coming four more years later in 2015. While many have speculated that Vince took Macho Man's departure and defection to WCW very personally, thus never welcoming him back into the company, this conspiracy theory is a bit warped and may be the craziest conspiracy of them all. There is a theory that says that the real reason for Savage's exit from WWE and the subsequent fallout with Vince was due to Savage having an affair with Vince's daughter, Stephanie. Lending credence to the rumor, after Triple H made disparaging comments about Savage calling him a dinosaur in 2004, Savage responded by threatening to steal the game's girl Stephanie, which further spread the previous rumors even more. Bruce Pritchard, among others, have repeatedly gone on record to debunk this theory, but the theory still persists as one of the longest standing conspiracy theories in wrestling history. And that's our list. If you liked it, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, subscribe and enable notifications so you never missed a fun wrestling list just like it. And make sure to comment down below and let us know what wrestling conspiracy theory you believe in. Otherwise, make sure to keep the conversation going on our new Wrestle Talk Twitter and Facebook, both of which are linked in the description below. Follow us on Twitter, underscore WrestleTalk, and jam that jam.